Hmm. All right, this is my story time. And I'm going to try and tell you people out there some things to look out for and not to fall for a trap that I fell for. This goes back a few months. This is back in, what, uh, November. So, what? Well, one, two, three, four. This is about, you know, almost six months ago. And um, I was on the market for a car in specific. Uh, I told Riley to cruise Facebook Marketplace just for shits and giggles. I was looking for another 79 Chrysler Cordova with T-tops. Has to be a T-top car. And he so happens to find one that looks, looks decent at first glance. It was white. And the pictures that he took weren't bad pictures. There weren't many pictures. There was some good outside pictures and some interior shots. And it looked good through Facebook, okay? So, price of the car aside, this car was looked like it was in a lot better shape than my Cordoba I have in my garage over there. So, I was like, maybe I'll get this car if it's priced right and if it's what it, everything it looks like it is. And I'll replace that car with this one. Well, we call a guy on the phone it's an older guy. I think he was in his upper 70s or early 80s. He said that he used to work for GM back in the early 70s. And it's like, he didn't work in a factory or anything, but he was would go from like dealer to dealer. One of them kind of guys. And he's telling us all about this car. Says, oh, you gotta be, you'll never believe this. It's got like 40,000 miles on it. And I actually got it off of the original owner and they bought the car new and they parked it in their garage for a long time and it has like no miles and it just it's an incredible car you got to come out and see it okay we spent about two hours on the phone combined between me and my dad talking to this guy all the way out in rochester new york and we're out here in harrisburg pennsylvania so i'm not just gonna jump in a car and go on a five hour road trip for no reason Um, right off the bat, I started noticing some weird things when I got there. Over the phone, the car was immaculate. We could drive it home, the whole however X amount of miles it was. Keep in mind, this is very close to Canada at this point in New York. He's like, oh no, runs and drives perfect. He's like, I, I keep it maintained, it's in storage. I'm just, I've got too many cars and I'm trying to let some cars go. And he's also like, I'm a big GM guy. It's one of the few Chrysler products I own. He's like, you come out, you can, I can trailer the car home for you if you like. You can come out and drive it. The car will make it from New York to Pennsylvania with no problems. I'd be skeptical of the tires, but everything else, not a problem. I'm going to try and keep this introduction short. But anyway, we get out there and immediately looking at the car, it's been repainted. And he told us it was repainted over the phone. He said that it was repainted years ago and they did a great job painting it well immediately the car looks like it's been painted with house paint okay it used to be a light blue now it's white if you look in the video you'll see when the hoods open look at the driver's side fender where it has a flange that meets the body you'll see all the paints lifting all the overspray everywhere okay big deal i can paint the car i want to make it black anyway i can sand all this shit off i go to start the car up and the battery's almost dead, and I'm like, great. Finally, it starts up. Good. It's running all right. It's making a whole nasty noise. It had uh, an exhaust resonator in the rear quarter panel, like under the quarter, and it was, spl it was split open, and it was rattling, making a god-awful noise. They'll hear it in a second. And, uh... It was running okay when it was cold, when the choke was on. Well, I pull the car into reverse just to see how it idles in gear, and it falls on its face. So I start feathering the gas lightly just to keep it running, and that's all it took. That knocked the choke off. Game over. Car would not stay running. Um, you had to keep your foot on the gas to keep it running. Um, air filter's black. You could tell everything was original on the car. Nothing's ever been maintained. And... 
I'm like, okay, we shut the car off. We start looking at it a little bit closer and we go for a test drive. The guy wouldn't let us take it for a drive. He had to drive it. <clears throat> okay. Whatever. You drive the car, I'll go for a ride. It's me, my dad, and Riley, Bubbles. Riley was running the camera and we didn't get too much footage. But, uh, I want you to pay attention in this video. The way this guy was driving the car, he was into the gas really hard. Didn't drive the car easy, couldn't just let it coast down the road, cruise. He was into the gas really hard to keep it running. And not only that, he was holding it in first gear, then holding it in second gear and holding it in drive. And it was cold, so my dad says, why don't you roll the window up? You got the kids in the back of the car, They're, you're probably freezing them out. Without a hesitation, he says, oh, why don't I just turn the heat on? Well, I'll get back to that. Just pay attention to him only wanting to turn the heat on instead of putting the window up. Then, we'll go down the road a little bit, we get to a stop sign and he's gonna pull a U-turn in the road. As we're slowing down to the stop sign, he's going from drive to second, then he's going from second to first as we're slowing down. He's keeping the RPMs up to keep this thing running. And the whole time he's talking about, oh, I couldn't find anything wrong with the car. Yeah, oh, uh, what did he say? Oh, he said, I couldn't find anything wrong about the car except for the muffler was rotted out. Um, then we're on our way back and he's fucking blasting through the gears, winding this thing out. And finally, when we get back, we start looking at it a little bit closer. Well, guess what? I go to roll the driver's side window up. It doesn't go up. It binds in the door. Okay. That's why you want to turn the heat on, not put the window up. You know what's going on here. The wipers don't work. My dad's trying to investigate why the wipers won't work. He quickly figures out the wiper transmission's broken. Okay. Meanwhile, the guy that's trying to sell us the car is yanking on the wiper arms, trying to put them up and down. And uh, my dad's like, stop, what are you doing? I told you the wiper motor, or the transmission's broken in the wiper motor. This guy was expecting us to come out and buy this car for full price of what he asked. And without a doubt in his mind, it could make it from New York to Pennsylvania. It was getting dark out, it was raining, and the car had one working headlight out of four. No high beams, no passenger low beam, one driver's side high beam, or low beam. Uh, the reverse lights were actually unplugged, the sockets were unplugged from the uh, housings, the fixtures. Um, the radio was missing, big deal, but there's, you could see behind the radio, there was a couple harnesses with the connectors cut off of them. Um, what else? Oh yeah. Whether you, when the car is running and driving, if you turn the headlights on, the key buzzer starts going off. That's not supposed to, you know, if you leave your headlights on when you shut the car off and the keys are out, the key buzzer is supposed to go off? No, it does this regardless whether you're running and driving. Uh, there's countless items we were just finding wrong in this car all too quickly. It was just, it unraveled itself. And this guy was set on his price, and I told him because the body was clean underneath. The car is rust free. If it has anything going for it, it's rust free. And I told him, I said, I really like the car and I'd like to take it off you, but I can't pay you that price. You got to come down a little bit. And he's like, well, he got very anxious at that point and says, well, if you can't pay that price, then you can get off my property right now. And I looked at him and said, okay, fine. We got in the car and left. So be careful what you're doing when you deal with people. And uh, just be careful when you deal with people, when you go to look at classic cars or anything that's older. I am, uh, I'm still really upset about the situation. I wanted the car. It's nothing I couldn't have handled, but I wasn't paying that price for it. And he got really angry. The other thing is over the phone, he told me that when we came out there, he has a lift and that we could put the car on the lift and look at the undercarriage. Well, when you get there, he says, well, I don't feel like pushing that Z28 out of the garage. Uh, here's a floor jack. Towards the end, I should have took that floor jack and jacked this car up by the oil pan. And on another note, this guy was just feeding me loads of garbage because it's a 79 Chrysler Cordoba, okay? Nobody likes those cars. And the people that do know their shit about those cars. He's trying to tell me, oh, it's worth all this money because it's one of 500 T-top cars that made that year. Um, wrong. Don't try and play me because you told me earlier, oh, I'm a GM guy, I don't know anything about Chryslers, okay? That's his, that's his award-winning lines right there. 
I'm a General Motors guy. I, I don't know my, much about Chrysler's. Oh yeah, it's one of 500 T-top Cordovas that year. They didn't make 500 of those cars. They made 3,074 Cordova T-top cars that year. <clears throat> I've had my car since I was 16. I'm a buff at them at this point. <laughs> don't try and feed me all these lines. And then when the car is running horrible, he's like, uh, I don't know, maybe it just needs a set of points or something thrown in it. Did you say points? You're a GM guy. You should know everybody's had electric ignition since the early to mid 70s. GM may have been, might have been a little late to the party, but Chrysler's had it since like, like 72. He's clearly not knowledgeable about anything. He made up everything he wanted to sell this car, and he's never gonna sell the car because you need to find a Cordova guy that wants this thing, and any Cordova guy that comes out to look at this car is going to know right off the bat the same thing I did. This guy's feeding me a line of horse shit. And it's not worth the price he's asking for it. And you're never gonna find a non-Cordova guy to come out and buy one of those. It's just not gonna happen. Nobody's gonna blindly come out and buy that thing. So. But anyway, here's the video. Sorry for rambling on. I'm just really upset about the whole situation. And I finally got the footage from Riley. That's why it's coming up now and not back in November. So, have a look at ha, Just have a look and let me know what you think. This guy was a straight clown. Three, uh, his three catchphrases. I don't know anything about Chrysler's. I know what I have. Okay? You know what you have, but you don't know anything about Chrysler's. And there was another line he kept saying. I can't remember what it was. But man, this guy was a straight up scam artist. And, yeah, he claims he's got, like, 50 other General Motors cars. He specializes in mid-70s B-bodies, like those ugly Caprices with the ugly windshields. And, uh, yeah. So, anyway, watch the video. Let me know what you think. got attack in it.
it's got a vacuum leak. It could have, yeah. Probably driving at home would be a... Uh... You won't put your window in here. Oh, here, over here, hey, Dad. They're cold back there. <coughs> Headliner's in good shape. Yeah, I everything, mean, I mean, the carpets and the other stuff are all nice. Now, this is going to have a catalytic converter on it. I don't know if that's something you guys want to leave on or take no, off. It comes off. Yeah. <laughs> All it is setting up for a fire and for a swirling shot. It's got the rear window defroster in it. It says, if the tax right, it says 300. Marty. What? If the tax right, it says 300. There's no way. Yeah. But it's under five. That's what the tax says. Read the tax. Oh, yeah, look at the tax. The tax reading at three, 300. There's no way it's idle down that one. Marty. Fucking rain. Grab it once. He worked. I can feel it. Yeah. Why aren't the wires working? I want to know. That's an electrical problem. The reverse light. The reverse lights don't work. No. No. These fucking work. It's too much, Marty. It needs to 
much for it. Yeah, this is this is probably got a little bit of ten year old gas still in it. Um, so I don't know how many hey, the gates say. So yeah, this video is definitely called the Cordoba Clown. I know what I have. Like I said, the only thing this car had going for it is besides my radio screwing up. It was a uh, T-top bucket seat center console car and it was rust free the undercarriage of the car was really clean but mechanically wise and electrical wise this car was done it needed so much work and if you would have cut his price and even if you would have cut his price in half that would still be asking more than what that car is worth and you, you just got to be careful because the guy sounded sane over the phone and when we went out there to talk to him he was all right at first, but as soon as we discovered everything that was wrong with it, as quickly as they did, he started getting very nervous and just started hovering over us. Like, what are they going to discover next? And you could tell he was flustered. And that's basically when he told us to get out because I couldn't pay him that price. So sometimes you just can't tell with some people. And he's talking, oh, I know exactly where you guys are at. I come out to Carlisle all the time for the... Spring and fall show. Well, actually, I should have went this year. We just had the uh, spring show last week. I should have went out there and looked for him. He said he comes out here with his motorhome and sets up a stand every year. Still got his number. I think I might text him. You sell that car yet? All right, everybody. See everybody later. Um, oh, yeah. I went and checked out my motor today at the machine shop. That's done. I got to go and pick it up. So I got that on camera, too. So you'll see that in the future. All right, everybody. See you later.